Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. Yeah. Don Dawkin. What's going on, Don? Good. Nothing. Working on a new record and... I have another record coming out in a couple of weeks called uh, The Lost Tapes. A lot of old songs that never made it onto Dawkins Records. So, you know, I'm just working like all musicians. Yes, Not yes. much else you can do with the COVID. You just stay home and write music. Yep, yep. The Lost Songs, it's, it's 1978 to 1981. It's going to be released on August 28th on Silver Lining Music. Okay, so where did you find these tapes? Where were these magical tapes? Um, well, I have a house in LA and I have a house in New Mexico and I decided to move a lot of my stuff from the LA house up here. Okay. And I'd had, you know, like everybody has, you stuff, you stick stuff in the garage and it just disappears for decades. You know, you just forget about it. You know, boxes of junk, magazines, clothes, uh, equipment, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. you know? So I just said, look, I got all this recording equipment from the old days when I owned a recording studio, I don't need it. Flight cases from former tours that are broken. So I just got a big truck and just started taking it to the dump, getting right. rid of all this stuff. And I found this box, well, not a box, like a plastic tub. And I opened it up, and it was real heavy, and opened it up, and I saw these reel-to-reel tapes, like two-inch, wow. which took me back a little bit because nobody records on two-inch anymore. Yeah. You know, everybody's digital now. It's a digital world. So anyway, I was like, what the hell? And some had notes on it, and some had no track sheets. I don't know what was on them. But then I did see one uh, tape that said Michael Wagner, Tennessee Ton Studios, 1979. And I went, oh, shit, those those demos I did with when I met Michael 40 years ago. Wow. So I just figured, I have time. We're not Our, our tour was canceled. Uh, a friend of mine had a, a real to real machine still. We fired it up and cooked the tapes. You have to bake them when they sit that long. And and then we just transferred all this music onto a hard drive. And I took it home and just started listening to all these songs that were done, not done, partially done, drum machines, cheesy sounding, you know, um, and just took it all home and went through it all. And there was a lot of songs I liked, but, you know, they had a drum machine on it. And I wasn't crazy about that. So I had BJ put real drums on it and John redo the guitars and so on and so on. So that's how this thing came about. So what did you keep at the end of the day? Did you keep the vocals? Did you keep, like, from these songs that you found? I guess you're rebuilding well, see, I, kept, I kept I kept all my guitar tracks. Um, John just did the solos over. Yeah. I redid some of the drums and I kept some of the drums. Uh, so I just kept as much as I could. Mostly my guitar playing, my bass playing, my guitar playing, my vocals. I kept all that. But there was two or three songs that had like a real cheesy drum machine on it and yeah. it just didn't sound very good. So I thought I can leave it like that, but it sounds like hell. So I just had BJ put, you know, better punchy drums on him. And then the guitar solos, I had John do a redo. A, well, I had John do solos because a couple of songs didn't have didn't have a solo, just blank. Yeah, You know what's been bothering me since 1982? It, it, did you find any sort of scratch tracks with you with the Scorpions on the Blackout Days? I've always wanted to hear mm -hmm. that. I've been asked that a lot. Yeah, yeah I have some. But uh, I would never give it to anybody or play it for anybody or let it out of my hands. Because I remember when they were re-releasing Blackout. I'm not trying to change the subject, but I remember Matthias Jobs, I interviewed him, and I asked him on the deluxe version that they were coming out with, the 40-year anniversary, will they include Don Dawkins, maybe a few tracks from Don, you know, back in the day? Um, and he, he didn't know. So I, I, I'm trying to find somebody who knows. Well, that's not an answerable question. I didn't sing any lead vocals. I just sang background vocals. That's it. But did you do the scratch you know, tracks, the, sort of like as they were building the album? A couple, only two songs I scratched. 
Okay. Just two. All right. But, uh, you know, I'm sure those are long gone. I mean, why there'd be no reason for them to put me on, on a, a song that Klaus sang, you know, it was just a scratch track, just to save Klaus's voice. Cause you'd had some vocal problems, but you know, I didn't sing. I only sang like a couple songs, like a really quick 20 minute scratch track just to get the melody on tape for, for Dieter, for uh, Klaus. To me, I, I, I got to ask you this question because it's been bothering me for like almost 35 years. Um, how long were you in the studio with the Scorpions? Well, I mean, as far as me participating on the record, just like two days. Okay. You know, but, but as far as me being in the studio with them, I was in there for a month because they were making Blackout at the same time I was making Breaking the Chains. Yeah. Yeah, okay. in, the same, in the same studio and except was in there making Russian roulette it was except Scorpions and me and you know they had three different uh, recording rooms and we were all in there so wow. we were all hanging out you know in the re- he had like a uh, Dieter Dirks mom Frau Dirks she would cook us dinner and we, they had like a little cafeteria and we'd all take breaks or go out to dinner down to the local pub called Peter's and you know, and terrorize, and, and we all hung out for a month, and we're playing video games, and playing Galaxian, and Pac-Man, and, you know, so it was about a month I was there hanging out with those guys. Wow, it sounds pretty cool. Nice days. How about any, okay, so going back to your, your unreleased tracks that you're going to be releasing, the Lost Tapes, um, are there any songs from there that you're saying, you know what, maybe I'll hold on to this one, it's a gem of a song for another Dokken album? That album? No. Okay. I mean, these songs, look, every every musician usually when you write, you got to remember back in the days of records, you only had a certain amount of time to put music. I think it was 33 minutes you could fit. That's it. You couldn't put any more than 33 minutes on an LP. Yeah. So, you know, when the days of the CDs came out and like Metallica puts out 15, 16 songs, you know, you had, a, a, when it went digital, you could put more songs. But we'd always write 14 or 15 songs and, you know, and just pick the ones we thought were the best ones. Okay. All right. And sometimes I'd write a song, I'd be making a demo, and I have a little drum machine, I'm in my little apartment playing guitar, I'm singing, and I just, you know, would work on a couple of days and go, you know, this song's just not happening, I'm not down with it. So I just abandon it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and congratulations for winning the at the Metal Hall of Fame, the award. Uh, that's where I actually was, met you. I just got out of the hospital, and I was a little just loopy still. So, but yes, it was a great honor. I appreciate it, and was very kind. I'm really happy, you know. Yeah, so yeah, it was great. And, and from what I remember is, and I, you know, if you want to talk about this, great your health. I remember your hand was blown up. You showed me your hand; it was blown up. You know, you could barely move it. I mean, how's that coming along? Uh, unfortunately, it's about the same. Paralyzed? Since, yeah, my, my hand and my forearm and my triceps are still paralyzed. It's been seven months. Um, you know, the doctors just kept saying, be patient, it'll get better, it'll get better. I can move my fingers about another inch, but that's, and my thumb doesn't move at all. And my four fingers are still blown up and swollen and look like sausages. And, you know, so... It's been seven months, and it's not getting any better. So I have to accept it. They say it might take a year wow. or a year and a half. And all I can do is be patient and pray that I wake up one morning and it's starting to work. But uh, the reality is it's not getting any better. So I might my guitar playing days might be over with. Wow, that's pretty sad. But I played for 50 years. 50 years, I got to play guitar. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, can still sing. At least, yeah. At least it didn't paralyze me all the way. Yeah. You know, so it could have been worse. They could have killed me. You know, so yeah. uh, it, you know, it's not that bad. Don't talk to me, please. Um, so everything's, you know, it turned out. You know, it could have turned out worse or better. How did uh, so? You were telling me outside actually when you're, you're sort of like you fell, you hurt yourself. I, I guess that was after the surgery, correct? Oh, yeah, I fell in the snow after the surgery. That didn't affect anything. Yeah, I went to open the door uh, in my car. It was snowing, and I uh, 
and I tried to use my right hand, which was paralyzed, yeah. you know, but it's just habit. You know, I'm right-handed. It's just habit, you know, and I reached for the door with my right hand, and I had food to go in my left hand, and I hit some ice, and I just, God, it happened so fast. And the next thing I know, I was face down into a, you know, snowbank of ice, and I got two black eyes and bloody nose, and, you know, I mean, I really took a face plant, but, uh, but you know, it could have been worse, because, well, I remember somebody helped me up, some people were walking by, and they helped me up off the ground, and there was like this railroad tie with a bunch of spikes sticking out of it for people to park their cars, and I missed it by about three inches. Wow. So if I would have if I would have fell face down on that that rebar and railroad ties, you know, I we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Yeah. So so tell me, and this is the last question on your health. Where did it all begin? It was just it just all of a sudden you woke up one day in your back paralyzed arm. Is that how what happened? No, no, it was just like little things over a couple of years, like riding my Harley. Uh, I kept, you know, taking it back to the shop saying, there's something wrong with my clutch. It's really hard to pull in. Wow. You know, the clutch is very stiff. And they said, no, it's fine. And then when I ride, you know, I was having a hard time holding the throttle, like my hand would get weak. And then I started kind of walking like, like my equilibrium was off, you know. And I drop things. I pick up a cup, or I pick up a plate. Let's say the dinner, and my right hand, and and it felt like it weighed like ten pounds. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? So then I started getting a tingling sensation in both my arms, like my fingers were going to sleep. So I went and got an MRI, and they did a full spinal scan, and they said your spinal cord is completely like crushed, compressed, and it's, and you're getting blood and it's going to cut off the blood flow to your arms and it's cutting off blood flow to your hips. And then they asked me, you know, did you get an accident? And I said, no, were you, were you rear ended, you know, by a car? I said, no. Did you take a bad fall? I said, no. They said, we, we don't see this very often down five, six and seven, which is the, the place when people break their necks, they usually die. Yeah. And I said, no, I don't, I don't remember having any bad falls or any accidents. I don't know what happened. It happened over a couple of years, but, you know, when I couldn't ride my Harley anymore, I was like, this sucks. So the bottom line is they said you can wait, but the longer you wait, the more nerves that will die and the nerves will not come back. And at some point you will be paralyzed. So I said, okay. So I went and found, thought I found the best doctor in LA at Cedar sinai and had the surgery. And it didn't go so well. You know, I woke up and I was paralyzed worse. So it's the way it goes. Like I just drew the short straw, man. Yeah, you you won the wrong lottery. That's when my doctor tells me, hey, Jimmy, you won the wrong lottery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, the whole point was so I get my hands back. Yeah. I I didn't think my and then not only my hand, my forearm, my my whole right arm. I can move it now. I can lift it up and down and move my fingers a little bit. But you know, I can't pick up a pen and sign my name, or I can't hold a fork. Or so I'm learning how to be a lefty. <laughs> I'm just thought I can't ride my Harley. I want to ride my Harley. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. well, I mean, music. So they, so patience. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's always music, right? I mean, what's so? What's the plan for the next studio Dawkin album? Okay, we're talking about the the Lost songs, but what about new Dawkin? What's going on there? Well, luck, same thing. Lucky for us, before I lost my hand, the use of my hand to play guitar. Yeah, uh, we wrote like 17 songs for Broken Bones. Nice. So, so many of those songs didn't make it onto the record. So I went and looked into my, dug out all my old hard drives, and John did, and John's a great guitar player. He had a ton of ideas. I've had a ton of ideas. And so John's just doing the guitar work, and I'm doing the lyrics. And there were, actually, I found, like, three songs I'd play guitar on we're going to keep for the record. And uh, that's, we're working over the Internet like a lot of people. You get on Zoom or Skype, and 
you know, John has a studio in LA and I have a studio up here and, and we just exchange ideas and I say, what do you got? And he goes, what do you got? And, you know, he'll play me a, a song I did and I'll say, hang on a second. And I'll, because I can't type anymore with my hand, I bought, you know, vocal programs. You just talk into a mic and it types for you. So I'll just start typing out lyrics and that's how we've been working. And we're about half done with the record. We've got about seven songs so far. So what are you, what are you looking at as a timeline in the next six months? Um, that's a hard call. In the perfect world, you know, we were going to have an album out this summer and then Corona hit. Yeah. And that changed the whole world for everybody. Yeah. So it was good, good timing to put out the lost tapes as a... Buffer. Uh, a buffer for our hardcore docking fans to have some new product from us because it had been so many years. And then I was, we were talking about, uh, we're thinking about re-releasing Broken Bones because I never thought that that album got a fair shot. It, it was a really good record. I was really proud of that record. But the record company we were on at the time didn't do anything. They didn't promote it. They didn't advertise it. It just kind of came and went. So Silver Lining might be re-releasing Broken Bones. And um, and I had an idea, I'm, which I have, I'm thinking about releasing a best of Doc and Ballads for the holidays, like yeah. Christmas time. All right. It's never been done. We never, <laughs> a lot of bands do their, their, you know, their ballad album, you know. And I said, shit, man, I have written so many ballads in my career and on every every album, you know, one or two. And then John was saying, yeah, why don't you just get like all your favorite ballads you've ever done in Dawkins and some live versions and acoustic versions. And let's just put out a whole album of ballads for like Christmas. And I think that would be real cool. So I'm working on that too right now. So over over time, Dawkins has evolved. I mean, what's the next, is the musical direction going to be the same next time around? Or is it just, it's going to evolve into something going else? Retro. We're kind of going retro. Okay. You know, I mean, look, you're right what you're right as a musician. You know, your life changes. The world changes. You're right what you're right. You know, you're influenced by new bands and other music. But, um, you know, I, I know where my bread is buttered as far as the classic Dawkins sound. And John's real good at doing that. And so I said, I think we should write a record between the lines of tooth and nail and under lock and key and that's kind of the direction i'm writing in right now all right and uh how about a classic band reunion one-off shows uh no no mix retired mix yeah. retired oh yeah 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 all right it doesn't play anymore mix completely retired george has lynch mob uh i've done a few shows with george we okay. were supposed to be playing i was supposed to do 10 shows with george this summer Yes, but the COVID the COVID hit. He doesn't fly. He doesn't want to travel, and so that all went out the window. All right. Well, there you have it. Dokken, the Lost Songs, nineteen seventy eight to nineteen eighty one, on August twenty eighth, on Silver Lining yeah. Music. Thank you so much, Don. You can Don. get on vinyl too. Yeah, oh. you can get on vinyl. It's coming out on vinyl. Nice. So CD, vinyl, yeah. and cassette. <laughs> No more good that. Was Doc never released on an eight track, the first album? No. No, we just missed that era. You know, <laughs> I have a, few, I have a few platinum records on my wall that have a cassette in it underneath. Okay. You know, right. I love my eight tracks. I remember listening to Y and T in my car on an eight track. You know, and and then I had a in high school, I had a old sixty three Corvette, and I had a little four track. And then, and when they invented the A track, I thought that was so amazing. <laughs> well, but those I'm, days are gone. Thank you so much. All right, bye bye. bye.